hours here, I have an hour here, I have three hours here. I'd like to come in on that portion of time and just visit the patients. Maybe all those that have just came to the hospital yesterday, the new admission. Then maybe visit those who would, if we were to start asking the patients, would you like to see a volunteer chaplain? And they say yes, if that gets faxed somewhere and you go to that fax and go see those first. You say, yeah, I'd like to do that. But some of you go, I don't have time for that. I am busy. I might be on call now and then. And the next person goes, I have time. I would love to come in every Monday for three or four hours and visit patients. And the next person goes, I'll come in two days a week. You see, I have 16 volunteer chaplains in my hospital. I can't keep them away. I'm saying, it's not your day. Go home. <laughs> you know? It's John's day. It's Bill's day. You know? And they're like, but I like being here. You know? It becomes an exciting ministry when you start seeing what happens in people's lives. Hi, come on in. You want some breakfast back there? Sure. And there's some uh, chair on the inside, too, if you'd like to take one. So this part, I'm going to give three different thirds of a training today. This part is going to be kind of the basic training of what hospital chaplains do in a routine day-to-day. -day. Let me give you some distinctions between clergy and chaplain, between those that are working in their parish in the church and those that we would call volunteer chaplains. Clergy, when you come in as a clergy person wearing your church badge, you would distribute any materials that you want to. You are visiting your people. I have no jurisdiction over what a local minister does with their people. Okay? They can distribute any kind of material they want to. Hospital chaplains are more careful in that, that we don't distribute our church denominational material. We may get together and as your volunteers go, we're going to bless this material that we give out together. You know, maybe this is a non-denominational type uh, pamphlet or booklet that we could pass out together, and your group would bless that together and say, this is okay for what we do. But no, you wouldn't come in as a Baptist minister, Methodist minister, or whatever minister, and say, I'm a hospital chaplain today, and I'm giving my denominational stuff, okay? That just thing. Also, you would visit as clergy your own people. You wouldn't go room to room, bed to bed, visiting other people. That is not allowed by the HIPAA laws, and I'll explain what that means later. But a chaplain could visit any and every patient. They wouldn't force their visit. They might come in and go, hi, I'm the volunteer chaplain. Would you like to talk today, or would you like a visit, or is this a good time to talk? No, thank you. Okay, smile and leave, okay? Or those visits I'm talking about, where they get faxed or cert machine, where they say, I want to visit, you would visit those patients. If you're in a room where there's two patients there, you're visiting with one that asked for it, and this one over here is like smiling like they would like a visit, you would. But if you kind of go after your visit, hi, how are you today? Fine. You would kind of know they don't want to, okay? So you would work with that kind of realm as a hospital chaplain. A clergy would get medical information from the patient and the family. A clergy cannot anymore. We used to kind of go to the nurse and go, you know, tell me some information. What's going on here? And the nurse said, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're a local minister thinking about no more, okay? But the hospital chaplain, since you're wearing the hospital badge, working with the institution, if you need to help, and it's kind of give you information if you're connected, what you need to know, the hospital chaplain might go to a nurse, case manager, someone working with the team going, can you help me? I'm trying to minister to this family. Yes, and they give you bite-sized information, what you need to know as a volunteer chaplain working with the hospital. The clergy has full freedom in your theology and rights. Again, I don't have jurisdiction over what you do as local clergy, what you say, what you do. So you come in and you work with your patients, your, your people as you would. The chaplain would be non-denominational interfaith. We'll talk a little bit more about that, how you do that. But you may be of a certain denomination, but when you come in, you don't reveal that. Several times, I get this all the time with the hospital chaplain. They, we get to talking along, then they go, well, Larry, what is your denomination? I go, I worship at a church in town with my wife and I, but that's really not important. I'm not here to talk about my denomination. 
where do you go to church? So it goes back to them. But Larry, what is your denomination? I'm not here to promote that. I'm here to talk about your niche today. Well, the third time, well, okay, my wife and I worship at the church on Midway Boulevard. Well, there's three on Midway Boulevard. <laughs> I'm still avoiding it, okay? Because that's not what I'm there for. But they kind of go, well, I like you. Where do you preach? I don't preach. This is my ministry right here, you know? I preach occasionally at this church, that church, that church. But they're, they're connected. You see, they're connecting with you. They like you. And they're like, I want to know where you go to church because that must be the right place. But that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm not here to promote that. So I avoid it like the plague, trying to move the conversation on and focus it back on it. My main theme is, it's not about me. It's about you. If it were about me, oh, I'd like to talk about my denomination, and my theologies, and my philosophies, and what I believe, because then it would be about me. But it's not. It's about them. The clergy may see the denominational census. If I've got a parenthesis, some hospitals do this, some don't. Can a clergy come to the front desk and say, I'm Methodist, may I see the Methodist list? Folks, no. Okay. Some hospitals do it. Some risk managers don't do it. I'm not dictating whether you should or not. If the risk manager and, and the hospital team want to do it, fine. So for right now, use the local clergy. Come to the front desk and go, I'm here to see Jane Doe. I don't have a Jane Doe on the list. Well, Jane is her nickname. And she has her real name on the list. And we have a Doe here. No. And they'll go, no, we don't have her here. And you go, I want to see her. Well, like before you come, find out what Jane's real name is, okay? Because we're only allowed to say if, if it's uh, Josephine Doe, that's who we have here. Yes, I have Josephine Doe, okay? So if you, as a local minister, come in and name a name for us, we'll tell you if they're here and we'll tell you what room. And you're going, well, oh, that's sure making it hard on me. I just, want, I'm the nice guy here. I'm just coming to visit the patients. I'm not trying to get any more information. We know. And we'll talk a little bit more about HIPAA laws in a few moments to help you understand how we can help you better. But the clergy may see the denomination, not to see the denominational list here. You may just ask a name and get that. The chaplain, if you're working with the hospital, you may go to some computer or to admission or someplace and go, Hi, I'm a volunteer chaplain. I'm here to work today. Can you print me on the census, please? We'll give you the whole list. And then we'll talk later what to do with that list and shredding that list and taking care of that information. The clergy may use any title. If you're normally called reverend, pastor, father, imam, shaman, whatever you call yourself, you call yourself that because you're there to visit your people. Okay? A hospital volunteer chaplain, we come in and I put the little word volunteer and I'll talk about in a minute why we want just to call ourselves chaplain, but your badge will say volunteer chaplain, okay? So we're not coming in, hi, I am rabbi, or I am the priest, or I am reverend, because that kind of defines a denominational distinction. Here, you would be on that two hours you're here visiting, I am Chaplain Larry, okay? And that distinguishes our ministry, therefore it doesn't confuse him. Hi, I'm Father Larry. Well, that would, Father Larry Pope, that would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm Father Larry, and I'm also a volunteer chaplain. They go, okay, I'm confused here. What are you, okay? So it kind of narrows that down, what we call ourselves. Clergy may wear a denominational attire, collars, yarmulkes, uh, any kind of thing like that. Chaplain wear administrative attire, kind of like this, just a shirt and tie. Uh, Sometimes um, we have casual Fridays around here where we kind of be more casual, and that's okay. But we want to look professional. Where when they see us, and many, many studies have been done about this, of how people perceive you in that first chance, we're trying to look professional. If someone needs to wear clerical because of their ordination or yarmulke or something like that, We'll talk about that, and that's okay. If you if you need to, uh, because of that uh, ordination, that's okay. But we've tried to become more administrative. Clergy fulfills patients' total spiritual needs, and you're coming in there as a minister, and you're taking care of their needs, and you're whatever they say, you meet that. Communion, 
baptism, uh, 